Hello everyone, welcome to my craft room. Um, as promised, I'm making my first uh, craft along with me tutorial, so to speak. Um, anyway, today we're going to be working on some bowls and trivets and working with craft cord. Um, yesterday I, I made some examples. This is a trivet that I made um, to to put my coffee cup on in my craft room so I have a place to sit it and it, my mat won't get destroyed. Um, I also made this little bowl trivet or um, koozie I guess. It's for it's just about to be um, stew and soup and chili season and I often microwave a lot of my um, stews and chilies and stuff like that so um, when I get them out of the microwave they're super super hot and I always have to use a mapine or a dish dish rag not mapine because we don't say that we're not Italian anyway <laughs> um, anyway um, I decided to to see if I could make some of these and so we'll we'll put together something similar. Um, what I, where I got the idea was I've been um, redoing my craft room and I recently bought this bin and um, at Hobby Lobby they just started selling this craft cord and we're going to be working with the gray today. Um, but the craft cord is what I use to, to make those, those um, other things. So anyway, what you'll need for today is some craft cord, some um, thread. I use embroidery thread on mine just because I like the shimmer and the sheen that it gives. Um, embroidery thread has a little bit of a shimmer to it, and I like that. So... Um, <clears throat> don't want to say um a lot, but I'm doing it. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're going to go over to the sewing machine because you'll need a sewing machine, um, some thread, and the craft cord. And we'll go over there. And Okay, so here we are at the sewing machine. And I just wanted to... Um, real quick talk about the craft cord that we're going to be using today. It's called Cora's Cotton Craft Cord and it's made by Pepperell Braiding Company out of Massachusetts and when I opened my other package of craft cord it it had these manufacturer flaws in it uh, like this and it's kind of throughout my cord so I contacted the the company today and I actually spoke to the vice president of the company and he is gonna be sending me a package um, to rectify the situation um, you know it, it and and companies will do that if you um, you know find a or get a, a purchase a product that is not up to their quality standards um, they'll certainly try to to make their customer happy sometimes um, I've found a couple of you know incidences that this has happened to me in my life anyway so I contacted the the company and they're gonna try to rec rectify the situation so <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> so anyway getting back to oh sorry bumpy camera uh, hard to figure out logistics so when you open the package you're gonna get an end like this that comes pre-taped um, yesterday when I was working with it I untaped that but I'm gonna try to um, kind of sew into it and um, see how that happens we're gonna be making a little bit of a bigger um, project today I, I want to make a bin for underneath my desk here 
to to hang on to projects that I'm working on. So I'm going to make mine a little bit bigger. So I'm going to start with a tail. Um, and it's going to be pretty flat on the sides. Um, so I'm going to start with a longer tail and, and connect these with a zigzag stitch. We're going to be zigzagging all the way around. And as you're doing this, you want to start out where your cord is feeding off of the edge of your sewing machine over here. Because if you do it so where to where your cord is feeding this way and around, you're going to end up with a lot of, you know, depending on the project you're working on, you're going to end up with a lot of material in your the neck of your sewing machine. So you're going to want to start um, kind of backwards. Well, I think that it's backwards. Anyway, so here we go. I've got my machine all threaded up. I've got to put it on a zigzag stitch. And I want it to be a little bit further apart. So I'm going to lengthen the stitch length so that it's a little bit of a wider um, stitch length. And I've got it at a 3.0. <clears throat> and it'll be different on different machines. I don't know. I have a Janome here. Oh, I'm feeding it backwards. Okay. Got to remember to feed it the right way. All right. And we're just going to start in this, this little uh, loop that you make with your cord. Or if you're doing a round one, you're just going to start so that the, the tail is on the left and your cord is feeding on the right. So I'm going to pull my cord in through. Sorry, bumped again. Okay. Probably should have wadded up that cord a little bit, but it's okay. Alright, so let's get it squeezed under there. Got my machine all ready to go. And you're just going to stitch, I don't know if you can see it very well, but stitch I'll figure out all this camera stuff soon. If you can see, my stitch is so that my stitch goes on this side and this side of my my throat plate and I want to make sure I'm catching both ends of that and I might be stitching a little bit fast but okay and I'm coming down to where my start is so I'm going to loop this around and I want to give it a little bit of a space there just to make sure that I get so there's a little bit of space right in here so that I don't end up with any wonky curves or angles because it'll it'll kind of tend to bowl up on you and I want a very flat um, project so Make sure there's a little tiny bit of space in there. And here we go. Put my needle down in the end there. And I didn't put the needle down on the machine. Okay, and then I'm going to pick it up, turn it slightly. Put it back in, lift it up again, I want to go really slow through this corner and it'll get faster as you go along, but this first corner I want to go really slow curves. Put my machine down again. And 
And again, we're coming up on a curve. I should clip those threads off, but I'll clip them off later. Anyway, we're coming up on a curve. So again, you want to leave just a little tiny, tiny bit of space right in there. And here we go. Stop with your needle down in the middle section, not on the outs outside, kind of in the middle. And pick your, turn it ever so slightly, stitch, stitch back into the middle. Turn it again. And the reason you want to do this is so you don't get a, a bowl shape. on my curve in the middle lift turn stitch lift turn I just don't want too many stitches in that corner. Oops, I kind of came off there a little bit, but that's okay. You won't even be able to see that. I'm going to go around this one corner and then I'll take it off and show you what we're starting here. Okay, I'm just going to snip my thread great machine that does it for me oh gosh I'm sorry for the bumpy camera so here's what we started and this is a very flat I've got no bowl bows starting meaning it's not starting to curl up and I don't want it to because this is going to be a pretty flat I want it to be very flat um, and I don't know if you can see my stitches I did a very wide stitch length or wide zigzag on these. Um, I love the shimmer of it. Um, but anyway, this is going to be a very flat thing until we get to the other side. So let me um, stitch some more. And I just snip the edge and I'll just start a little bit further back so that it touches all those threads together.
here's uh, just one of those spots that I was talking about and I'm gonna try to hide that so that it's on the bottom um, I'm using this defective um, cord hopefully it'll not show too much but um, I'll let you know on Friday with the manufacturer oh it got caught in my machine there we go what the manufacturer does about it to rectify the issue but I I um, remind me sometime to tell you the story of the Cheetos I taught my children pretty young my daughter did a little uh, report about it in school after we got a a defective bag of Cheetos we wrote to the company and they corrected the issue and hopefully we saved uh, the company a whole bunch of money manufacturing crap Cheetos <laughs> anyway It, it is starting to bow a little bit right here because I did that pretty tight in that corner so I gotta be careful of that because I don't want to bow I'm trying to make a kind of flat one so just go a little bit don't go so tight around those whoops and then I missed so let's go back cut that off I just don't want to go tight into the corners. Make sure that I'm leaving it kind of loose. And I don't know if you know what I mean by kind of loose, but just not so that I'm pulling this, so that I'm leaving it kind of loose in there so it doesn't bow up like, like it's doing right there. because we don't want it to this project's going to be a little bit of a flatter um, surface there we go and it's flattening out I tend to go a little fast and I need to remember that not everybody sews at this fast of a speed but Do you see what we're 
kind of working on. Now I'm bowing it up on purpose. Hold on one second. I have a hole. So I missed a couple spots. But you can just go back in and add some stitches in there. Never know the difference. And it looks great. I love that little little sparkle that those stitches give to it. But, but see where I went off a little bit? I can go back in and just add a few more zigzags in there. It's turning out cute. Okay, I'm going to speed up the video a little bit. Um here and there so hopefully that's not going to make anybody dizzy but give it just a second okay you guys for the sake of time I'm going to go ahead and um, work my way around until we start to um, I'm going to curve this up a little bit um, so that we've got uh, more of a bowl shape um, but I want it to be rather large I'm, I'm going to make this this is probably about so far about four to five inches wide um, let me get a measuring tape and I'll tape it or see where we're at right now we're at about four inches wide um, I want it to be approximately 12 inches wide so I'm going to keep going around in a circle and then I'm going to start curving it up to where it's a bowl shape on the edges um, so I'll see you back when I'm about 12 12 inches so I've gotten to uh, about 10 inches in width this way and I just wanted to show you that the bowl it well it is starting to curve a little bit and I don't want that I want it to be really flat and what's happened is as I'm stitching along I, I got a little bit uh, lax about keeping it really loose in there and I had to go back in and you know because I was trying to do it quickly just slow down take your time keep it really loose and you shouldn't have problems with this but I do have a remedy for it and um, I'm just going to take some spray starch and kind of um, flatten it out before I go on any further um, and I've just got about three or four more turns around uh, to do before I start um, really trying to lift it and um, get that curve in it so I'll be back when I start that process Okay, so the spray starch worked perfectly. I'm just about to uh, 12 inches, but I think I've decided that I want to start curving now. Um, so I'll head back over to the sewing machine and show you how we start um, making it into more of a bowl shape. Um, but it is perfectly flat now. Um, just worked out great with this spray starch. Okay, so let's head back over to the sewing machine and I'll show you how to start cupping it. Um, circles around here. I hope this is not bumpy as I'm sewing for you. Oops. So I'm kind of pulling it. You can't really see my other hand, but I'm... I'm slightly pulling it taut so it's not loose it's it's really pretty tight under there so I'm kind of pulling on that as I'm sewing not not a lot just to make sure that it's kind of going to start curling up as I go around as soon as we get over to this other side, you'll see what I mean. Oops, there I did go on top just a little bit. Okay, so this is almost where we started from. I don't know if you can see that stitching in there, but it's really, really close. And, it, and it's kind of making this lift 
ever so slightly and and as we do the next stitches we'll bring this up so that we're kind of making it bowl shaped I don't know if you can tell but I'm I really got this kind of going in this direction now so I I'm I'm pulling this up as I'm working on it and I don't know if you can see back here how it's starting to form a bit of a bowl shape in it just ever so slightly do you see what I mean and it's because I'm what I'm now doing is since I got my flat surface and it's purely flat um, now I'm kind of pulling this a little bit tighter I've, I've lifted my material up to um, up to my my sewing machine so I'm kind of just sewing with it kind of in the air almost that pretty tight on there because I want it now to start bowing up Now when you're doing a round one, I, I missed quite a bit in there. I'll have to go back and restitch that. But when you're doing a round one, you're almost the whole time working with it bowed up like this around your sewing machine. you see how it's making it into that curved shape missing a lot because I I'm kind of working at an angle um, that's weird and not right up on my sewing machine so that I can film it but that's okay as long as you're kind of getting the idea of what's going on here Got some weird gaps in it there. <laughs> but that's okay. doing on thread I'm oh, good on my bobbin thread I'll have to go back and fix a few spots in line 
hopefully yours is turning out better. I hope you're doing this right along with me. And I want to see if you are. I want to see what you made. Oh, I'm loving it. It's so cute. I probably don't want to go this fast. I'm doing it pretty fast. But I am almost to the end of my cord, so we're going to take it off here in just a minute and fix those gaps. And I'm going to show you the final product, what we ended up with here. I'm almost out of bobbin thread, so that tells you how much it does use a lot of thread. Almost a full bobbin on this one bowl. It's something on my real plate there. Okay, so I got some gaps that I missed, um, but we're at the end of our entire bolt of craft cord. So what I want to do with this end, I didn't untape it. Um, what I did is before I starched it on this where the heck, it was one of these corners. I can't even find it now. It's right in here somewhere. Um, but what I did is before I starched it, I went in and just um, cut off that little piece of tape and pried it out with some tweezers so that I didn't I didn't get any kind of frays or funny um, spots in there. And it looked great. Um, so I think I'm going to keep that on for this. And I got to go fix these little gaps that I. I missed when I was showing you but um, I think I'm gonna keep this little piece of tape on and then I'm just gonna fold it into the center because um, I want the outside to look nice so I'm gonna fold it in and this is very curved and you can't really see it but I'm gonna fold it in and we're just gonna sew right into it whoops I want it to be up on my up on my um, piece then I'm going to turn it and sew it right down onto it and come off a little bit come back I know you should use your reverse but it's okay and there we go. Sorry, I keep bumping the camera. New new things. So do you see there? It's It kind of looks a little bit uh, overdone there, but that's okay. Let me fix these spots, and then I'll come back to you and show you what we've ended up with. All right. So this is the final bowl um, that we 
made and it is um, designed to fit right down here. I've got this little lip um, similar to what I've got going on right there or there. Um. Hey, so just wanted to thank you all for uh, joining me in my craft room today and I look forward to um, making some more videos and we'll try some different things. A couple of people have suggested that they'd like to see some cricket uh, demonstrations so we will try to touch on that a little bit and a couple of other things I have in mind. Um, look for um, new videos every Sunday I'm going to try to upload every Sunday evening, if I can, a new video. Um, and I've got a whole bunch of a list of a million different things that I want to show you guys um, or experiment with. So um, look, f like, and subscribe, and watch the videos till the end because that helps me grow and. Um, learn this new fun thing YouTube thing it's been uh, really fun learning all of these new gadgets and and um, ways to to do this so I'm really excited to to get these going so thanks for watching and I'll see you next week